Hello, those amigos. Cash, your president and CEO of Cash International Luxury Real Estate. Hey guys, we're in 2024, brand new year. We are looking for uh, many, many new and exciting experiences here in the Dominican Republic with you guys. And we're gonna share as many of them as we can. As you guys know, last year, uh, near the end in December, I was able to introduce Bri, uh, who specializes in the Las Vegas market for Cash International Luxury Real Estate. He's really dialed in there and he's really doing a phenomenal job. So. Um, him and myself are really going to be able to guide you on your searches there in Las Serenas, okay? Again, North American, watch that video if you haven't, he's introduced himself. Um, we're also doing the same thing here in Punta Cana, guys. We're doing exactly the same thing here in Punta Cana. We're guiding him, we're bringing the best of the best here so that we're able to assist and guide you guys in your search for a place that you can call home here in paradise. Whether you're gonna call it home now or call it home in the future, or you're just a savvy investor that understands there is returns here. You want to diversify your investments, your real estate investments. You want to not be stuck in one country, whether it's the U.S. or Canada. Uh, you're coming to the foremost leader in guiding North American clients and buying property here in the DR. Okay, and we're going to be able to show you the trifecta. That's what we launched uh, several months back. The trifecta being Las Trinas, San Domingo, and Punta Cana. Uh, those three markets are very different, very scalable. You could invest in all of those. You could live in all of those and you could experience something completely and utterly different in each one of those markets. So what I'm doing here today is uh, we had a couple visits with developers and clients. Uh, one of my good friends and colleagues, professional colleagues from Canada, has decided to come down on vacation to check it out, see what it, how, how the DR feels. So he's here with me and I thought I'd take a, a quick chance to just chat with him and share kind of the thoughts, some of the questions he has, because he's relatively, uh, he's been following my development throughout as when we moved down here, very well versed on everything that we do, how we do it, the different properties that we brought forward. He has a, an amazing grasp on, he's been handling a lot of the, uh, our media efforts and stuff back in Canada, but he's been contemplating playing around with the idea of maybe calling Paradise Home a few months a year or maybe full time. So guys, today I'm standing here with uh, with my good friend and colleague, professional colleague, his name is Sam. He's gonna say hi, and I'm gonna ask him a couple questions. Uh, it's just a beautiful day, good opportunity to get some sun, good opportunity to chat with a good friend and introduce somebody that you might meet in coming months if you're looking at the Punta Cana market because from what it's sounding like, he, uh, he really loves what he sees and it's not out of the realm of possibility that this guy ends up down here working with Cash International Luxury Real Estate. Uh, okay and providing you guys with the guidance, the cash guidance that you need when you're buying properties here in the Dominican Republic. So guys, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Sam. And um, Sam, what I'm gonna do is, I would love for you to give me your, you know, your quick elevator speech on what Punta Cana feels like. You've seen Las Trenas, you understand Las Trenas, you've been there, you've visited there as well. Uh, you've been with me in San Domingo and Piantini, and now you're here with me in, uh, in Punta Cana. Uh, you've been there a few meetings now, uh, you're getting a chance to soak it in on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, Bobro Beach. Tell people how it feels to be here for the first time uh, and why you are really, the Dominican Republic is really starting to resonate with you as a place that you would love to live. Thank you, Cash. Uh, I really love it here, honestly. The weather, from my anticipation of what it was going to be, uh, I thought it'd be really hot, humid, all that kind of stuff, but no, it's a beautiful day today. You know, the waves are coming nice, there's a nice breeze. Um, it's, it's not too hot, and the atmosphere, the culture, the people, it is it is incredible. And the growth of Punta Cana is something that I've never seen before. Cash and I drove around a lot yesterday looking at different things. Um, the culture, the nightlife, the food, everything is here. It's it's honestly moving in that in that direction of that new Miami, that new Florida, that, that new cool environment. Like it's going in that path, and you can see it going rapidly, really, really fast. Actually, Sam nailed it, and Sam actually alluded to something that, we're, that I'm going to be talking about a lot, a lot, a lot in season in uh, in this season. But uh, in 2024, one thing, a phrase that I'm going to coin, like I coined the, the the trifecta, the trifecta here that we're offering people. But the a big thing here is Florida. You mentioned Florida, okay? I have so many people, so many people I know in Canada, so many people I know across the U.S. that they need to retire they're ready they're at that, that stage in their life but they cannot afford to do it it's a big big problem right now so guys what we're going to do here we're going to launch it in this video is we're going to go ahead and say 
Punta Cana is the new Florida. Okay, Punta Cana is the new Florida, guys. So forget about Florida. Stop wasting your time and efforts. Unless you've got a few million dollars just sitting liquid that you can do whatever you want with. Guys, switch gears. Change it because I'm going to say you have everything that you need. I'm going to ask Sam about it because we've been driving around. It's the first time uh, really getting exposed to Punta Cana. When I say Punta Cana is the new Florida, tell me what that means to you. So the, the way that I look at it is, you know, uh, weather is incredible. Obviously, I don't think we saw one bad day since we've been here. Been working here for three yeah. days. Look at this. It's just beautiful. Uh, the way that they're they're developing, the way that they're building their villas or their condos, it's nothing that you could ever see. Like they're so well built. The nightlife is incredible when you go out. There's always something to do. Uh, people are out. Uh, food is honestly hands down one of the best I've had in a very long time. You know what? One thing I want to ask him too, because uh, all those elements are, are spot on. But you can you can get those elements, obviously, great food and a nightlife. You can get all those things in Miami too. But when we're talking about the people, and that's what's key. When you're talking about the people, and another big one is cost of living. The cost of living that's blowing them away. How little it costs to live a great lifestyle here. That's something that he was getting exposed to. Another thing, when I say, and I'm gonna let you speak to this too, Sam. Another thing, when I say that Florida. I mean, Punta Cana is the new Florida. The infrastructure, the highways, the roads, the stores, the shops. Tell them everything you were seeing in that regard. So what I was seeing, obviously, I've lived all over Canada most of the time. Vancouver, Toronto, Halifax, and live in Windsor now. Um, the way that things are built here, it's just so much different. You can hop on a highway, be at a massive mall where you get everything that you need. Um, massive grocery stores, huge grocery stores, kind of like similar to your Walmarts and stuff like that. Um, but everything that you have in North America, they have here. The same stuff, but at, it seems like at a better price. Yes, Everything correct. seems like at a better price. But you can go buy something in Miami or Florida, which is going to cost you a lot. Or you can come here and spend a couple hundred thousand and you're getting paradise. You're getting beauty. Yes. You're getting culture, food, stuff that you would not normally experience. So right now we were just talking about something uh, today. He, Sam, he browses social media. I'm not a social media. You guys know I don't have Facebook and Instagram and all that nonsense. I just uh, make my videos. I post them like this one and I put it out there and I go back to work. So because of that, I don't get exposed to a lot of the nonsense out in the world. Uh, call it good, call it bad, whatever you want to call it. I like it. So he was telling me this morning, he, he said, hey, Cash, did you hear? As soon as somebody says that, it's usually no, tell me because I haven't. But go ahead and tell them. And, and this, is, this is something speaking to the culture and... Uh, the mental health of the Dominican population. When I say very often here, it's an emerging market. Uh, it's an emerging population, emerging middle class. A lot of the frustrations and stress that we have in North America is related to the middle class being destroyed and crushed because they cannot afford simple, basic items like their grocery bills. Uh, they can't afford the schooling for their kids. Uh, God forbid you're in the U.S. and you don't have insurance. God forbid you are ready to retire can't afford any of those things so that being said that's affecting mental health tell them today what you heard on the news which is very sad and very negative but unfortunately it's a reality of the world you guys live in in North America so the violence you see in big cities the large traffic example you see in Toronto Toronto you go for noon till nine o'clock at night you have so much traffic here it's not like that there's no there's no violence there's no you don't see any of that everyone's out just so why were you just telling me that happened what you, you told me you read something on yeah uh, i read on, something on, on social, social media, media that there is very sad. that there was a, you don't a, say any mall names or anything a like that but. or a shooting inside of a mall in Toronto. a major mall major mall very very popular mall which is very you know why would you know someone with a wife or girlfriend or anybody would want to go there after seeing that or hearing that now with kids. With kids, that's that's a very big thing. The safety of kids, obviously. Cash has a daughter, brings them here, there's no worry. Like there's none of that. There's no if you look around, everyone's just looking to have fun, everyone's having to having a good time. They're all relaxing, there's family, wife, husband, every, every age demographic is here. Um, that's a big that's a big, big reason. Now that there's uh, as you guys you guys have gotten to know me really well over the past few years. Uh, Obviously, you're just getting a chance to meet Sam here today. There is, we're talking about family now. We're talking about quality of life. 
I focus on, I have uh, I have my daughter, as you guys know, got my wife, so I'm really dialed into her well-being and her health and her quality of life. And those are the things that drive me. So I have many, many clients that also have the same directions because they have kids. They have young children, uh, they become the focus of their lives. Like, for example, Sean, my brother, uh, Patrick, yeah. focuses the kids, right? But then you also have people like Sam, and Sam is really gonna dial into this for me because we've been having deep to deep talks and we're gonna cap the video off with, with that part of it. But people have elderly parents out there. They have parents that need help. Some need much more help than others. If they don't need help now, they're on the verge of needing help uh, or they're in catastrophic situations where, for example, a good friend of ours and colleague, Dan. Dan's a good friend of mine, big shout out. We love you, Dan. Uh, you're dealing with that situation right now. He's dealing with it. He's got a father. Um, he's a limited family. He's got a sister in the U.S. He's in Canada, and he needs to take care of his father, who is unable to uh, fend for himself, take care of himself. Uh, it costs. It's, it's costing him in excess of four to five thousand dollars a month to be able to do that, and there's no hope in sight. So, this is very important because so many North Americans are stuck with this right now. Uh, what Sam is is Sam is not married yet. Okay, he's single. He doesn't have any children yet. So what Sam has is a mom that he absolutely adores and loves. And Sam's focus, when Sam's looking at the world and he wakes up in the morning, Sam's thinking about his mom. So when he's in a place, and let me ask you, if you're if you're standing here in Punta Cana and you're thinking about your mom sitting, right now we just had one of the worst uh, winter storms we've ever had in, in, in history. Uh, I think since 1947 or something, I don't know what it was. Uh, his focus is his mom. The opportunity that would lie here for her, the care that would lie here, the quality of life that would lie here. Speak to that a little bit, how you would be able to provide for her, give her a life that is amazing. And you're gonna be looking for those opportunities for her. That means he's gonna be looking for those opportunities for you. And he's gonna dial in. Okay, yeah. My mom's elderly. She lives a simple life, um, but lives, lives a simple life with a lot of expenses. You know, you can't... You can't live, you can't live a simple, affordable life anymore. Man, so like you're going to the grocery store, you're spending $150 on two bags of food. Here, you're getting fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh juices, fresh everything. Like it's just, that dollar goes so much further um, being here and being in this environment. And the weather helps, honestly. Like we were talking about it when, before we left Ontario, we went on a flight, we saw that, you know, your lips are chapped, you know, you're not feeling too hot. Good you know, point. You get on a flight, you get here, and you just feel good. You feel like you actually like just want to be here all the time. Like Cash and I are standing here by the ocean, and it's just like you feel good. Like you wake up in the morning, you don't, you're not groggy, you're feeling good. You want to go out, you want to do things, you have a coffee, you do your thing, have a nice breakfast, and then you're set for the day. And it's just it's the way that the it's empowering, very empowering, very very empowering. It's like. It's more to the effect Rejuvenating, of, yeah. empowering, invigorating, reinvigorating, re anything that you could put a re in front of, reinventing yourself, re anything, that's what it is. 100%. I agree with Cash. Honestly, so this, this is me here. I love this. I think this is somewhere where you can build a life, you can find someone, marry. For me, that's what I Can I, I say do. something actually? And yes. please, anybody out there, uh, don't take uh, any offense to it. You can build a life, you can live a life, and honestly, you can end a life. Meaning, you can pass the, the, the final years, because they're all going to come for us, so there's no reason that we need to shy away from talking about it. It's going to come for us, but this is where you want to spend those last few years, months, and days not in the cold of North America, freezing in a, in a tiny little apartment with heat going, skin chapped, dried, with people that are frustrated, angry, and upset in a uh, healthcare system that is absolutely broken and not there to help you. Where would you rather be? Agree. I 100% agree with that. Honestly, like, I don't know much about the healthcare here. Like, I haven't been to anything. No hospital. I can speak to that a little bit for you. Yeah. That, how is it here? Actually, you know what? What we'll do, guys. Uh, I know you're probably enjoying this. We're gonna we gotta get back to uh, some uh, enjoying enjoying our day. So we just want to share this with you. But what I'm gonna do here is we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about because Sam got exposed to this as well on this trip of his is Mariella. So we have an amazing amazing individual who works who does our professional services in our house she handles the cooking cleaning all of those things that are so critical to a family being able to thrive and grow okay these are essential services that we all provide ourselves on our own in north america laundry cooking cleaning groceries uh you name it whatever that is household duties that need to be achieved so here's a here's a critical one and the reason i'm, I'm touching base on this guys is because 
what we're really going to do is we're going to look for opportunities. That's going to be one of our drivers. One of our uh, mission statements is to find opportunity for our elderly population that is retiring or needs to retire in North America or will be shortly. We're going to find them affordable options here in Punta Cana. Okay, we're really going to dial into the middle class uh, in North America. We want the middle class to be able to live in, uh, an honorable life. The key thing here, the key thing as we wrap this one up is the cost of living, the cost of personal help, okay? When you're elderly uh, or not, it's no secret that you need assistance, you need help cooking, cleaning, moving around, getting around, getting things done, getting your bed clean, all those different things you need help with. The cost, okay, and this is what I want Sam to speak to because he almost fell out of the chair when I told him. The average cost or the standard price of five days a week, eight hours a day, half day on Saturday, okay, is $265 per month. Now guys, don't get up in arms, oh my God, how are they gonna live on that? That is not what this part of the discussion about. The, the discussion is about the going right there. Now how, let me speak to that really quick, because people will ask that question. How can they live on that? The reason people can live on that is because they don't waste things on frivolous stuff like us North Americans, okay? They, they keep their family units tight. Uh, you have four generations living together and because they live as a tight family unit, they're very re religious people, they don't waste on frivolous things. And because of that, when a family is able to pool their resources like we in North America don't, they're able to sustain that. So as of right now, in the Dominican Republic, that service is around 265. Now, many people like us, we pay significantly more because uh, we th that's just how we operate, but the going rate is that. So in and around that $300 range is where you're able to find that help. So that makes it even more attainable, something like this moving here for your mom. Uh, when I told you about that initially, the cost of personal help, what was your thoughts? It was shocking, for one. Um, even, even arriving at, at your place in Santo Domingo, yeah. like. I had to get used to Mariella and being there and it's just the fact that that like I normally do that for made. myself. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do my own coffee, I make my own bed, I do my own laundry, do my own stuff, but and it's just like she's open loving arms and just there. Part of the family, right? Yeah, she's like part of your family after and exactly. she's like so happy and it's just like waking up and being being ready for your day and just get your day going now as you know as you know i share everything i share everything about everything because everybody needs to know the entire experience of living here so the first morning you woke up when you stayed at our house what did you wake up to an absolute dance party oh yes an absolute dance so, party in the bedroom next week so cash's Elle, daughter Elle, yeah. Elle had not seen marielle over the holidays it was yeah. our first time back and there she is and she got a record player, so at 6 a.m., Mary, uh, at 7 a.m., Sam woke up to, and we all did, the record player blasted, and Elle and Mariella having a full-out dance party before she went to school. Very true. But you, but you think about that. Normally, yes. when you're in Canada, that would piss you off. That would make you upset. Someone just woke you up. Like, why? Why is someone waking you up? But it's like, it was just nice. It's, 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 it's nice to see. It's a testament of the culture. Correct. It's a testament yeah, of the 100%. culture. Now, granted, Mariella is phenomenal. Not everybody's not everybody's made equal, uh, but also uh, the Dominican culture overall is very happy and loving and friendly, and uh, and that was something you got exposed to. So now you translate that, you extrapolate that. This is what's important. This is what's key, and that's why I'm uh, spending a few minutes on this. You extrapolate that to your senior mother or father or family that is stuck, and you are stuck working full time wherever you're at. Like our good friend Dan. Dan, let's speak to you right now. Now imagine if you had access to that service and you had somebody that was able to take care of your dad uh, and you were able to afford and get him a place down here under 100k that he was able to call home and be there and have somebody there with him almost full time double that up and you got somebody there 24 hours right sure. uh, so you know that's going to be important and that's going to be something that i'm going to really dive in with sam and we're going to look for opportunities for the middle class the struggling population there in north america we're going to make life great for you okay we're, we're really going to find the opportunities that are going to change your life your parents lives and of course guys we got our luxury clients and all those guys are fine and well and they're looking for oceanfront properties and they're looking for the multi-million dollar penthouses and and that's all great and we're here for you as well but we have noticed and it's now started to become frustrating for me that we have the pot the, uh, we have forgotten about our elderly we've forgotten about the middle class that's uh disappearing and we're going to really dial into that here in 2024. We'll make it part of our mission. 
On that, uh, Sam, any closing thoughts? Yeah, just one one last thing. Like, just for myself, you can look at making $4,000, $5,000 a month in Canada, and you're barely getting by. You're barely surviving. You're barely buying food, paying for your rent, your hydro, all that kind of stuff. Here, four to five thousand dollars is like what, ten, fifteen thousand? Yeah, Sam, Sam. It's incredible. Sam, Sam's nailing something there too. Cost of living, uh, four to five thousand dollars here. Of course, you live uh, a modest lifestyle because you have access to everything you right. want here as well. But you live a normal, modest lifestyle like people are forced to live in North America. Right. Can't go out for dinner, can't do anything, no. and still can't afford to live. You can't four to five thousand dollars. Within three thousand, you're you've got yourself covered. Okay, you've really got yourself covered. But you got yourself covered living comfortably. comfortably. Going out for happy. dinners, Being happy. on the beach every weekend. Being on the beach every weekend. You got food, food full in your fridge. Yes. Um, you got everything you need here. I don't understand why people. Why are we choosing to suffer and stay here? Exactly. Why are we choosing to? Why are exactly. we choosing to torment ourselves? Exactly. Are we choosing to do that for a country that really? I don't know. I'm not. This is not a political channel, and I'm not a, a politician. But from what I hear. A lot of people don't believe in their governments anymore, and they don't believe that politicians are doing it for the people. So what is it that you're fighting for? What is it that you guys are staying there for when you can see it can be done? Very true. I think I read something today, Cash, that there's a tax hike in downtown Toronto. The mayor just, just announced that. Don't know the percentages, don't know anything. I read it, I read it quickly. But why is it continuously growing? Here, is, is it growing? Is it? No, it's sustainable it's comfortable it's political parties political are parties they're in line with what they want as in tourism yeah. and honestly cash put it correctly the new florida new miami the new amazing culture so we're going to get it right we're going to make some t-shirts for you guys punta okay. cana is the new florida all right so add that to the list we're going to get it done we're going to make some t-shirts we're going to put them up there for you punta cana is the new florida on that note guys we're going to go ahead and hop in with the family We've got a few more hours on the beach here in punta cana then we're back to san domingo uh but guys stay tuned what we're going to do in 2024 we're going to be doing uh we're going to be doing a lot of podcasts together we're going to be talking about a lot of topics uh important topics that are out there for you guys and we're gonna touch base on it we're gonna have discussions we're gonna do some podcasts we're gonna do all that stuff but guys remember punta cana make punta cana your spot for uh 2024 reach out to send me a direct whatsapp one five one nine five six seven one seven eight five uh that's it for this one guys remember love where you live if you don't right now reach out we will help you find your spot in paradise thanks so much <laughs>